In my country, when you ask a child to draw an image of love, he draws a bullet. Of judgment, he draws a gun. Of freedom, he draws a cage. Of his religion, he draws a coffin. I pray for God to rise up from the grave. Sealed off to the general public, and Khomeini's first few moments on Iranian soil were subdued. It was the quiet before the storm. <laughs> My name is Mohsen Sultanizan, I'm from Iran. In Iran, his revolution happened in 1979, and I was that time, I think I was around nine years old. I was a whistleblower in 1998 about the very famous killing people in my country, they call it chain killing. And that time, anybody want to write the history of what happened after the revolution, the government killed them. Anybody uh, want to write something, all the writers start to kill by government, and government support them. I was whistleblower for that. And the government was after me because my act, I speak out against uh, all the killing the writer, and they threatened me, and they came to search all in my house and took all my stuff, and I knew it. I had to run away. I didn't have any other option. Because it was very clear execution behind it. You'd taken a big risk in Iran, um, blowing the whistle on, you know, corruption and so on. He was desperate to flee Iran for good reason. Um, the, the authorities were certainly out to get him. I ran away from Iran to, to Turkey because the smuggler, the people smuggler was from there and sent me to some Asian country. I didn't know where I was. And final destination was Perth. We are a generous, open-hearted people, taking more refugees on a per capita basis than any nation except Canada. We have a proud record of welcoming people from 140 different nations. But we will decide who comes to this country and the circumstances in which they come. I think they should come to Australia, yes. I think they deserve a place in the world the same as everybody else. I think we have, I think we have to. Have to what? Take them in. I just don't think there's, I mean, we've just got such a big country and lots of space. I think we just have to be kind in terms of the rest of the world, that's all. Many of these people quite possibly will die or will starve as a result of not being able to find a place to go to. Right. Doesn't that fact at least temper your thinking? No, because, um, you know, that situation's occurring in other parts of the world and we can't solve all the world's problems in that area at the moment. I don't think we should at this stage. We've got enough troubles of our own. But these people have uh, many more troubles than we have and they need somewhere to go. That's right, yes, their standards are lower too. I guess it depends on whether you want an Australian country as it is now or a totally different country. I think uh, we all have to think in terms of the one world, one humanity. And uh, we all have international obligations to fulfil if it's going to be a peaceful world for everybody.
I came in 1999 Western Australia and Perth and I claimed for asylum seekers. Then they transferred me to Port Edland detention. It took almost one and a half year there. Then they transferred me to Willowwood and total all it took four years. He arrived here and to his horror, he, you know, was treated as a criminal from the, almost from the word go. It's one thing to live under an authoritarian regime and you know that government is your enemy and you're always on alert. But then I guess when you make it to a country that calls itself a democracy, that has signed the Refugee Convention and to be treated like that, that is, I think, even more psychologically damaging for a lot of people, um, including Mohsen. I've been in prison. I tell you, prison is much better than detention. It's much better than detention. And detention is totally like a hell. He was frantic. Desperate, desperate pleading um, with me and probably others for help in any way uh, for his case. He was, he was really bad. I can't emphasize how bad he was. He was like a haunted animal. Detention took everything. Even to change my person, everything. Detention gave me a whole bloody mental illness and never I can recover. And it really, really changed home, everything. Your attention is defined or dehumanizing. It, um, it, it causes people harm that is very difficult to recover from. The current situation is really contrary not only to treaties and uh, agreements, it's contrary to basic humanity. When I see your eyes, I see the color of the ocean. Sometimes I wish I was a little fish in your ocean. And sometimes I think the shark of your anger would love to kill this little fish. Uh, I had a visitor, you know, Susie came. She came to me and I told her, what's in your head night time? Write it down. At night time, I was sitting in the corner of the room. I had a blade in my hand for the suicide code. And instead I do the act, because I start to writing myself and see myself what happened, if what I do, what. And that was the poor really helped me. If a bird falls from the sky, There is one who will mend its broken wing. If a building collapses, someone will dig to rescue survivors. I started writing poetry when I was a child, from my childhood. And uh, I still follow it, but I always write about love and a lot of positive things. Because the poetry in my homeland is the one of the things is very like a philosophy. The journey started in Villawood or Port Headland when he started writing poetry and Persia, which he calls Persia, Iran, is an extremely poetic country. So it was part of his culture. And uh, so that was, um, that's helped him enormously.
started not just with poetry, but also with lullabies and songs and other political protest things that he was doing. So it started, I was just visiting Mossen to see Mossen. And we'd talk about poetry and music and he'd show me what he was doing and then say, oh, you should do the voice recording for this. So I'd say, okay, and I'd do a voice recording and then he'd show me poetry and we'd talk about it. And it just naturally started that I'd offer suggestions because he was asking me. And then we started to make regular appointments to, to actually focus on doing that because I found it really enjoyable because I work with poetry and I love it. But of course, when you're just teaching in a high school, it's different to actually making and helping create it. And having the opportunity to see Mossen, but also help make the poetry that's so beautiful in Farsi, accessible in English to a wider audience was really rewarding. I have to change it nicely. Why? why do you have to change it to be nice? Okay, we put you the sugar in. Yeah. Why not? Why not? We do that. Because if you if it's meant to be hard yeah. in Persian, yeah. it can be in English oh, good. as well. Okay, so we make the dashi. That's very good. The dashi instead of don't know or don't hand. smell the shit they eat. They don't smell the shit they eat. That's mm -hmm. the correct one. So no, the shit. I find it when some of friend ask me, please write something for hope. Which hope? What hope? That time I find it, my poetry totally is not like it was, how it was. It came to the dark point of the life and see the reality. I think my poem mean to me, being a human and life execution is hard it can be happen to any of us that's one really my poem try to tell i'm not gonna let white policy write my history i'm writing my own history his poetry is very much influenced by both his journey and his time um, spent in detention uh, it's present a lot in the grief and the sadness of the poems, but also the sense of hope and anger, which is understandable. And if you visit a detention centre, you feel those things yourself instantly and you're not even in there. But there's also so much of Mosen trying to find himself and grow himself in his poetry. If you think about detention as dehumanising, then Artistic expression is rehumanizing. In detention, because what I mentioned, because like I'm missing something, try to find it. And I see something and try to express it out. That's one like a meditation or like someone you can talk and you see what happened and that one, it's really helped. Writing poetry in park and villa wood or in detention is not comparable. Because first things, you know, environmental. You see the environmental whenever you look in is the razor wire fence around you surrounded. And not only that, and between the society and you is a big wall of hatred. And not only that, seeing that politicians use you for their own propaganda of their winning election. For more than two decades in this country, use these people for their politician game, soccer ball like a soccer ball. I became Australian citizen in 2005 
um, respect this country. The government did the whole bad things to me, but the country, not the country did. I do everything for this country, same as my country, but this land is the same I'm living now. And all the things, because I really want to go vote and try to, that time, you know, that's why I really was de desperate to get citizen to vote. You know, it's understandable. Many refugees, when they finally get out of detention, they finally get a visa, they mostly concentrate on getting their life back. Because you're not really welcome to society too. Because anyone you tell the refugee looking ugly at you, they think maybe you didn't, you stop from the hunger and his food. No, they run away from the persecution, from religion, from the things that they are refugees. I think because he's an active participant in society, um, through his advocacy, through his music, poetry, photography, um, I think that has helped him see himself as an active participant in Australian society. Sometimes people are just a newspaper headline or um, a three-word slogan on the part of a politician. But when people get to know people, why they left, their journey, what they suffered after they got here, I think it can only have a positive, attitude, positive outcome you know, for people and it can help um, convince people who may be sitting on the fence on this issue to actually take it seriously and go, these are real human beings. These are real human beings whose lives we have um, undermined. Uh, one day there will be a museum of the suffering and that museum will have a map as you leave and that map will show how many of the suffering the countries of the world took and I'm afraid that that map, unless things change, will show that once again Australia has not been a generous nation to people who are in need of asylum. But in Australia, unfortunately, totally mixed up. We've been illegal immigrant, we've been queue jumper, we've been terrorists, we've been anything. We've been blamed for the traffic light and all the crap things. No, they are not. You know, we are the same as human, any other human, any another human. But the life persecution did something to us. It's not about, and what is about it, because it's humanity. Humanity always fresh. And it's nothing can beat humanity.